right, we're on now. Okay. Mr. Drake, is there something we can take up at this time? Because Mr. Holbrook is not present. It just involves a labeling of exhibits. All right. Uh, yesterday, if you recall, the defense introduced a packet of photographs. Yeah. I have hard copies at the time. What we did was we had them print out black and white copies yesterday. They could use the data to the clerk. And they substitute all the versions of those photos. Colored photos are going to be entered today without your objection. Correct, all right. I, I see no problem at all with that. Um, one other thing. We have agreed. We have a professional agreement that both of our, our, our investigators and the All right. Uh, each side, of course, has retained or, or utilized the, the services of a f professional investigator, they will be allowed based on stipulation of the parties to remain in the courtroom. Okay? Yes, sir. That's it. Very well. There will be a composite exhibit. The photos, the color photos that they're about to be introduced, are they labeled as a composite? No, but I, I'm looking at them. All right. We'll, they're going to be A, one, three, seven. Defendants A, one through seven. Okay. A composite exhibit. And We're just going to take the black and white out of evidence, correct? Mm -hmm. And put the color, because they're the same pictures, except they're in color, correct? And the witness was shown the color photos. Got it. You just did. All right. Let's make this clear. The photos that were identified and placed in Devons were color photos. Those are the color photos therein. The party stipulate to the accuracy and the fact that the proper predicate was laid. Correct? All right. Very well. Mr. Holbrook has just come into the courtroom, Mr. Holbrook. A composite exhibit of photographs was placed into evidence yesterday. They were black and white. And this morning, your attorneys were able to generate the same photographs in color, yes. which are now in evidence. Do you understand? Yes. Sir. All right. Very well. Thank you. All right. And the when the jury is ready and prepared to bring them in, we will do so. Anything further we can take up? in at this time. Judge. Yes. Um, can I step outside? Yeah. Hold on. Go right ahead. There's someone on the side of this table. Drake said it would be okay. Of course. You can talk to any witness you want to. to bring in our jurors? All right, yes, let's do it. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Have a seat, everyone. I think you might recall that, that last night when we left, I told you the first thing we would talk about this morning is... Has anyone talked to you about this case? Have you seen anything about it? anything of that nature? All right. Very well. Are we ready to call our first witness? Yes, sir. Go right ahead, please. They call Amanda Julian.
Face our clerk, please. Can you solemnly swear and affirm the testimony you're about to provide will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Please have a seat and speak as closely into the microphone as you can. Straight to right ahead. Thank you, Judge. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Would you please introduce yourself to the jury? My name is Amanda Julian. Ms. Julian, where do you currently work? Uh, I'm currently an uh, independent contractor. Okay. Um, what type of work do you do? Uh, I do laboratory assessments. When you say laboratory, are you talking about uh, forensic laboratories specifically? Yes, I am. Where did you work prior to your current position? I worked for the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. How long did you work for FDLE? Uh, a little over 29 years. What was your position at the time that you left the Florida Department of Law Enforcement? I was the Forensic Quality Manager. How long did you hold that position? Uh, approximately 10 years. Could you briefly describe what your duties were as the Forensic Quality Manager? Sure. I oversaw um, the uh, quality management system for the uh, Department of Law Enforcement for the forensic laboratories. Um, I uh, was in charge of their accreditation process. I um, dealt with um, issues that came up um, during the course of uh, business. Um, Thank you. Could you briefly describe your educational background for the jury? Sure. I have a Bachelor of Science degree with a major in chemistry from the University of Georgia. Is the FDLE lab system accredited? Yes, it is. Now, you said that you deal with issues that arise. And so one of those that I want to talk about is whether you became aware of a contamination event in this case. Yes, I did. And how did you become aware of it? Uh, it was brought forward to me. Um, I'm not sure if it was by the supervisor or the technical leader at the time. Um, could you describe for the jury just the process that FDLE goes through when a contamination is discovered? Sure. Um, again, it, it's something we... Uh, uh, pay attention to the, um, uh, if, if there's an event that occurs, um, someone brings it to the attention of, again, the supervisor who then um, contacts the biology technical leader in charge of their laboratory. Um, they discuss the event, try to determine what happened. Um, a, uh, um, what's known as a cup log is generated. Um, and. Uh, then also a, uh, a quality assurance uh, review is initiated um, to determine what action might need to be taken. The CUP log that you referred to, is that an acronym? Yes, it is. What does it stand for? Oh, boy. Um, uh, contamination and unexpected profiles, I believe. And who prepares a CUP log? Uh, typically the, uh, uh, the analyst... Uh, um, that's involved uh, with the incident begins the, the documentation of, uh, of what occurred. Then you testify that after the cup log is a quality assurance review. Who participates in the quality assurance review stage? Sure. Um, the uh, supervisor uh, of the situation uh, typically starts that. Um, and then, again, the biology technical leader, um, the uh, chief of uh, the laboratory, the chief of forensics, um, and myself are all involved in, uh, in that process. In this case, who was the analyst that had a contamination event? Uh, I believe it was Jennifer Hatler. Uh, what steps were taken in response to that contamination? Um, I, I believe there was a, a change in protocol. Um, uh, regarding a um, uh, better way to decontaminate scissors. Um, and uh, I honestly don't remember what else off the top of my head um, was involved with that. Was a cup log completed in this? Is there any documentation that's prepared for a quality assurance review? <laughs> yes, there's a form that's uh, filled out. Um, And I'm going to hand you what I've marked as State's Exhibit 33. Recognize that document? Yes, I do. And what do you recognize that document to be? It's a quality assurance review form. Is that the form that was completed for this particular case? 
Yes, it is. Have you previously signed that document? Yes, I did. When did you sign it? Uh, the date is April 12th of 2016. There's a notation in the corner about it being placed in a file on February 14th of 2017. Do you see that? Yes, I did. And uh, who wrote that? That was me. And were you the one that placed it in the file? I was. Where was that placed? Uh, it was placed into the actual uh, case file that would have been involved um, you know, with this case. Now, where was it before then? You signed it in 2016. It was placed in a hard file in 2017. Where was it in the interim? Sure, it was in my office. Um, we kept all the uh, uh, quality assurance review forms uh, together um, at the time. And why was it ultimately moved? Um, we changed our protocol and decided to go ahead and, and file them in their, in their ultimate spot, um, which was the case files. Is that a fair and accurate copy of the quality assurance review form in this case? Yes, it appears to be. This time I move states 33 into evidence. The objection. Hold on, look at it. Certainly. It would be a You testified earlier about a change in protocol involving scissors. What was the reason for that? Um, that we felt that's what led to the contamination event, that the scissors hadn't been properly decontaminated. Um, scissors aren't uh, generally a disposable item, so they need to be you know, cleaned in between usage. And uh, we feel that that's what caused the event. When FCLA reviews the contamination event, excuse me, you testified there's a cup log and there's a quality assurance review. Are there situations where it rises to an additional level? Sure. What is that called? Uh, it's called a corrective action. And are those considered sequential steps increasing in severity? Yes. In this particular case, was a corrective action report completed? No, it was not. Why not? Again, the situation was addressed. We didn't feel like any additional corrective action was needed. Thank you, ma'am. appreciate you being here. Hi, Ms. Julian. How are you doing? Great. Is it Ms. Julian or Mrs. Julian? Mrs. Um, Mrs. Julian, um, it's my understanding that you're, when you worked at the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, you were also a sworn law enforcement officer. Is that correct? It is. Okay. And so you wore a badge, correct? Didn't wear one routinely. That was just a, you know, I, I was sworn. Okay. And sometimes you've helped in law enforcement functions such as serving warrants or arresting people when they needed extra people with that. Ne never did either of those. Uh, okay. Did you become an analyst first and then become a sworn officer, or was it the other way around? I became an analyst first. Yeah. Then you scratch that. Um, you were obviously you went through all the training to become an analyst. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And you did DNA analysis at some yeah. point. No, sir. But are you the person who writes the standard operating procedure for the biology department back then? Yes, sir. There was not your name signed on the back page of all the standard operating procedures? I issued them. I didn't write them. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing then you're not qualified to give opinions about the actual rules that were in here then? Uh, you would write that. That would be okay. not appropriate. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, but your name is, you're the, you, somebody else creates a standard operating procedure. You are the quality control uh, person, and you would issue them once they were finalized, correct? Yes, sir. Um, I'm going to skip way ahead then. Okay. Uh, I know it's been a while. We took your deposition a few months back, correct? Almost a year, I believe. Right. And you had the data file with you at the deposition, is that correct? It was provided to me, yes. Right. 
And they were, um, I'm not showing them to the jury, I'm just, they were numbered at the bottom by each of the pages. Do you recall that? I do vaguely recall that, yes. And I believe you have, you already have the DNA analysis carrier of unexplained profile lock up there, correct? Yes, sir. Was it the quality, you got the quality assurance review form? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to switch this one. There was a, and the carryover, um, you have page number 19091 on the QAR, is that correct? No, sir. Which, can you tell me what the number is? Uh, pull up my glasses. Yes, please. I put the wrong number because it, it was given to me twice. <coughs> it's, um, it looks like it's 014991. So you have the quality assurance review form 14091. And I'm going to show you um, the DNA analysis carryover unexplained log that is page um, that is page 22,441. And I'm also going to show you page 14,105, which is a page from the raw data file. No, you're fine. Obviously, there's no indication on the paper that, uh, you know, because I'm not required to sign those. Okay. And this page 14,105, the page of the data file, have you seen this paper? Uh, again, I, I may have seen it, but there's no indication, um, you know, that I have. I'm showing you page 14,091. Um, that is the quality assurance review form. <clears throat> Would it be helpful if I... Yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to ask, what's on the monitor that I published? Is that the same as the document that's in front of you? Yes, it is. And do you recall how many pages this raw data file was? What's the idea? Do you, do you remember it was number of inches? Uh, I know. I'm, just, I'm assuming it was. Okay. But you had the data file with you when we did your deposition, correct? Right, it was provided to you. Right. Obviously, we didn't go through every single page. Is that correct? Correct. But it was a few inches high. Sure. And in, um, it looks like February 14th, 2017, um, you place this quality, issue, quality assurance review form into the file. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Do you recall that you placed that in the file in the area for submission number 34? I have no earthly idea where I placed it in the file. I just know that, you know, I physically put it in the file. You work in headquarters in Tallahassee, is that correct? Or you did, I mean? Yes, sir. You worked at, where did you work at? In, out of Orlando. Uh, out of Orlando. Okay. And at some point, you came up from Orlando, Pensacola, and you placed this piece of paper in the raw data file. That's correct. 
and you don't recall where in the file that you put it? No, sir. Okay. Anywhere on this page, is there any way, and I've kind of zoomed in a little bit just to the text, and I can scroll it. I can go up or down, whatever you need me to. Does it say anything about that there was a contamination with the L cutty in this case? Back then, did you review the photograph of, during your investigation of this contamination of B20E that was in the data pile? No, sir. Okay. Did you ever look at any photographs of B20E before or after the contamination? No, sir. Would you agree with me as the quality assurance person at FDLE at the time? You were over half the, half the floor, is that correct? There were two quality assurance people at the time? I, I was the, the forensic quality manager, so... Okay. Were you the only one? I had the, I had the responsibility of the whole state system, okay. yes, sir. So, I apologize. So you were the forensic policy manager for the entire state. Would you agree with me that if someone takes photographs of an item of evidence and puts it into a raw data file, that the photographs should accurately reflect what that item looks like? I guess I'm not quite following okay. your, your question. I may have asked a bad question. I've asked the wrong way. Would you agree with me? that if an analyst takes photographs of an item of evidence and puts those photos into the raw data file, that that photo should accurately reflect what that item looked like. Is that, you agree? I, I mean, the photograph would reflect whatever it looked like at the time they took the photograph, I, I, you know. Yeah. And uh, how about this? If someone then made cuttings on that item of evidence due to a contamination, would you expect them to put another photograph in there to show what the item of evidence looked like after that was done? I, I don't know that the protocol required photographs to start with, so um, that may have been above and beyond to start with taking photographs. Okay, so maybe an analyst doesn't have an obligation to put photographs in there, right? Sure. But if they do put photographs in there, they have an obligation to put the correct photograph in there. They have an obligation to put whatever photographs they took. Okay. I apologize. I've got to go. No further questions, Your Honor. There's no redirect as necessary, Judge. Ma'am, I'll take the exhibit. Thank you. And this will be released. Yes, Judge. Thank you. Your, your Honor, is we go. We got our subpoena. There's some things that may come out. The information may not be released then because you may wish to recall it. Thank you very much. State's Exhibit 17, Judge.
Newsom, Sarah Carolina. The council asked you to see this is a shirt that we saw yesterday. Is that correct? It is, Your Honor. It is. It's a sweatshirt. Can we get that situation so that you can hold that up and we can bring it out here and show what it looks like? Witness to look at 
what is in evidence is a sweatshirt. We've discussed that, and our jury has seen the photograph of it. Do you wish to ask her about those two items? I want you to feel free, if you need to follow up in any way, about the photograph in that shirt, okay? If you wish, you, I'm certainly not telling you you have to, but if you wish, I want to give you that opportunity. Fair? Okay. You can see on there, you can see the L cutting and M cutting squares on that, on the actual item of evidence, correct? Yes. Okay. Can you look to the right and up from that spot? Oh, my God. 